Yo, what's going on, guys? Uh, We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a special guest, George, who is a member in MIC. He's been with us for a little over a year now. Uh, his name in chat is GSC224, I believe. Yeah, a little over a year. Now. <laughs> yeah, a little over a year. Cool, cool. And uh, he actually, if you guys remember, Joe Angelo, we interviewed him a few weeks ago. And this is his tab, his trading accountability buddy. So it's pretty cool to have him on, too. So we can kind of hear both of their stories. So thanks for coming on, George. Yeah, man. Yeah, shout out to Joe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Joe's a real one, man. He's a cool dude. I like him a lot. <laughs> And he's yeah. super friendly, so he's good to have an MIC. But but enough about that, Bum. So, George, how did you kind of get into trading? How did you find MIC and, and want to kind of lead us through that part of your journey? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I actually, I found trading um, like in 2016, 2017 with um, Tim Sykes. And yep. um, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how I actually like found him or anything like that. But, um, yeah, found him. And... Um, uh, it was really, I was really just, you know, I, I never really, you know, I never really traded, um, you know, when I was initially studying like in, in uh, 2016, 2017, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I don't know. I just, I kind of just like followed, like, you know, what he was doing and, um, yeah, I did study and stuff I, like that. Yeah. I did study a lot, like, you know, um, you know, his, his, uh, uh, his courses and stuff like that you know yeah. i was in his chat and then um i i basically stopped all that and uh 2020 basically when the pandemic started that's when i kind of got back into it mm-hmm. and okay. um, it was with him again so like i kind of just like you know joined his program and uh um yeah you know just started learning trading like you know from from you know from his uh uh online courses and stuff like that cool. but um yeah uh, I mean, yeah, it wasn't profitable at all. You know, like I, I, uh, um, I never got lucky or anything like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think some <laughs> people do. That that wasn't me either, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, as I mean, I was on Twitter as well, and um, mm-hmm. uh, I forgot how I stumbled upon MIC. I'm pretty sure it was Twitter. I'm not sure who it was. I think actually, I think it was Harry. I found Harry Haas through. Um, yeah, beyond, yeah, the, beyond the pdt yeah, with, yeah. Um, uh, with um uh matthew right bryce and matthew yeah yeah it was me yeah, and, matthew, and then you know i was following jack and and kyle williams and all that stuff yeah and, those uh, guys are all like um you know good friends of mine uh like i mean what I, I i think like not to like cut into your story or anything like that but oh, no, go ahead. i think that when you kind of uh you know, get to know people. And like, it wasn't necessarily through, like I knew Jack, like before beyond the PDT. And we were just kind of like going over because like I was a long trader. Uh, he was like an OTC trader. I was like, maybe I can teach you some stuff about longing. You can teach me some stuff about OTC. We can kind of, you know, mix and match about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But like, we've really kind of like honed in on our own style. But yeah, I met, uh, you know, Monaco, I met Bryce through Beyond the PDT, and I, I got to know like a bunch of Sykes guys kind of as well. And, you know, uh, some people who I talk to all the time, some people who I don't talk to a lot, but I think as you kind of, you know, get better in the industry, you get to know some people like that. And, you know, there, I, you know, never anything bad to say about like those guys, never. you know, yeah. great guys. So I just thought oh, that, 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 that podcast is definitely underrated. <laughs> I know that was fun. I wish they kept doing it to be honest. It was a lot of fun. But yeah. so George, at this point, when you found Harry, you found MIC, were you just like buying breakouts or were you just like, did you not even have like any sort of process? Were you just kind of winging it and hoping it would work? Or yeah, kind of what was that part of your journey? I mean, with the 2020 pandemic, you know, like all the coronavirus stocks, you know, it's it's so easy to get lucky. Like I guess there was a period of um where I was consistently winning. <laughs> but there was really no like you know process to it and um yeah uh um you know after like such a strong bull market you know you you can really just buy anywhere um at the beginning of the day and and uh and make money um yep. and it wasn't until somewhere in 2020 where the market started to slow down um uh i, I basically lost you know i made a few thousand and then i just kind of lost it all back mm-hmm. um but um uh, yeah there I just, I had, I had no process. And like, once, 
um, I, I remember I would, I would attend you guys' uh, Wednesday webinars with Tosh. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess I, um, I had to be like, I don't know. Yeah, I went to you guys' webinars and um, uh, I watched all you guys' like free YouTube videos. And mm -hmm. at that point, and then you, and then uh, you guys offered um, uh, the half off monthly. And yep. I mean, that just did it for me, you know, like I, I got hooked from there, you know, and uh, just, you know, became, became, you know, a member from there. Hell yeah, um, man. So what, what was your experience when you first joined? Did you find it was like easy to navigate? Did you find it was easy to like talk to people and like, you know, meet others and all that stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. just, you know, whatever, whatever, what everyone says, you know, like the, <laughs> the mods, you know, they're very helpful, very friendly, um, you know, in, in, in any other room, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't even get like an answer to like any moderator or, or anything yeah. like that. So it was just, yeah, it was just a big difference, you know, and um, uh, I'm glad I took that chance and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm here with you guys today and um, it, so much has changed, you know, like I just, uh, yeah, just like so much, um, knowledge now of, of you know of what's going on and um you know but the mic process and um, yeah man yeah so so, it's, so uh, i don't mean to like cut you off or anything like that oh no you're good <laughs> but uh um so you join mic and you know you watch some of the webinars you kind of get to know you maybe watch because you're more long biased right yeah that's yeah, I, I really have a style like similar to yours, um, mm -hmm. I would cool. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe we can kind of dive in and like talk about that throughout the podcast as well. Um, and so, but ju just since we're at kind of like the initial stages of just like talking about how you join and stuff like that. Um, uh, how did you kind of go about like attacking things? Is there anything that you would do different, like since when you first joined? Um, is there, is there, uh, you know, like, how would you kind of like attack the market now? Um, you know, those are kind of my questions that I was kind of wondering from you. Mm, well, I would say in the beginning, um, I, I've always liked longing. So any, any, I, I've always loved your videos, Harry. And like, I've, I've always, um, I would say like gravitate towards your strategies and stuff like that. Thanks, bro. And, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, so I mean, I would just, you know, learn from the videos. Um, I mean, I would, I would watch all MIC videos. Every, you know, everything is helpful. Um, but, you know, I, I would see your trades. I would, um, you know, you know, see your commentary. You know, um, main chat is very, very helpful. And, um, uh, you know, I, I would use small size. Um, I'm using bigger size now, but definitely in the beginning, you know, it's best to use small size just to, like, test things and stuff like that. And, um uh, you know, things just start to click, you know, and, um, uh, you, you start to understand, you know, um, you know, why stocks move a certain way. Um, uh, and, um, you know, you kind of start to see patterns and, uh, you know, just like all technical analysis, uh, that you guys teach. Um, uh, it just, it all started to click, you know, and, um, you just, you know, you start to feel confident and, uh, um, yeah, so like I'm, I'm very confident in, um, you know, for example, like short traps. I know, I know, Harry, that you love short traps. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, in the first bounce. Uh, just you know, all the strategies that that you know that you like. I, uh, I definitely have learned, and um, you know, still still mastering. But um, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, what what drew you to Harry style of trading? Because I know, like, obviously, people when they they first get involved, you know, it's a tough decision between longing and shorting. And, you know, we have really good mods for both. And, and what kind of drew you to, to longing and what drew you to Harry style of longing in particular? Um, I think it's because, well, I guess initially I, I have a small account, so I, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't really short at least in the beginning. Yep. Um, so, you know, longing was kind of my only option at, the, at first. Um, but as I studied it more, cause I, I knew I had to at least, uh, study that first uh, i actually started to like it and um, um yeah. you know I, I i've always studied shorting as well you know when i um when i study um you know the mic videos or um just you know with tom you know um mm -hmm. you know all short bias traders you know you, you could learn 
uh, from everyone, even though you're long biased, you know, so uh, just having like multiple, you know, multiple perspectives of, uh, of both sides, you know, that that could really help you. So um, yeah, for sure. That's great advice. Yeah. Uh, So since you're here and we only have like, you know, 30 minutes or so, I try and, you know, jam it in as much as we can (laughs) because there's so much to kind of like talk about. So what are some things that you find that you're kind of struggling with? I mean, you know, you have me here right now. It's not like a pre-recorded video or anything like that, or like a DM. You're not a robot. You know, uh, <laughs> what, what are some things that you're kind of struggling with now that maybe you need some clarity on, or maybe you'd kind of like to, you know, kind of learn about, or, you know, maybe talk about some struggles that you have with like maybe FOMO or like, I don't want to put any words in it like in your mouth, you know, cause like, I have no idea, but yeah. maybe just talk about like some kind of struggles or like how you would kind of attack every day or just anything like that, you know? Yeah. yeah psychology yeah. wise or trading wise, like anything, anything involved with the markets. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I, I would say, um, I would say it's like partly discipline. Uh, it's, all, it's also patience. Um, you know, it's, it's not like this every day. Uh, you know, some days I do really great, um, you know, with my discipline and patience. Um, and just some days I just give into FOMO and, um, uh, and it kind of just ruins the whole day. And uh, uh, I also have uh, trouble um, with the concept of, of being under PDT. Uh, mm-hmm. Just the fact that, you know, you, you basically have limited trades and, you um, sometimes that puts pressure especially you know if you like like you harry you, you mainly trade like the first i would say well two hours you know yeah uh, and, and uh if you think about it it kind of puts pressure you know like pre-market you're watching all the stocks you know watching it for hours and stuff like that and um it comes down to that you know that those you know maybe one maybe two key moments where you, you know you have opportunities to take a trade um sometimes you know being under PDT, uh, having those limited trades, um, you know, it could get to you. Uh, so maybe I'll get in too early, you know, thinking I'm, I'm going to miss a trade or, or, um, uh, sometimes I, I think that I'm patient, um, I'm being patient. And then once it gets kind of towards midday and there's, there's really not that much opportunity left, I, I end up like, you know, foaming, FOMOing into like, uh, a trade, you know, I shouldn't be in and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I would say patience, a little bit of patience, a little bit of discipline. Um, cool. Harry, you want to attack this one first? And then yeah. I can go into it. I think for me, especially with longing, um, longing is something where uh, not you're not going to see every stock go to the moon. I mean, with any stock, right? You're not going to see every single stock all day fade. You're not going to see every single stock go to the moon. And it really comes down to putting rules in place so you're not putting yourself in a position uh, where, you know, you're making those mistakes. And so I think that I have different rules for everything. So uh, for discipline, for instance, right, you know, or this one can go really for discipline, patience, FOMO. If I see something like, you know, like a big pump, you know, and you know what I mean, like a, a really big pump where you see something go from three to four or you see something where you're like, wow, I missed that. You know, I usually take myself and, and, you know, I have kind of like a rule where I'm going to wait, you know, 30 minutes to an hour where I won't stock after something like that. Right. Because, you know, every single person who has just seen what you've saw now has FOMO now has problem with discipline now has, you know, all those issues that you're kind of talking about that have kind of like you know, limited you away from that kind of, you know, consistency that you want to get to. So I guess you need to remember that every single person is really dealing with the same issues, but it's just really how you kind of go and attack things, you know, and, you know, being too early is, is another curse for a long trader, because when you're longing, like, you're always like, oh, I want to get in, like, kind of like, you know, when I was first longing, I would like long things that like didn't have any volume that were kind of dead because I was like, man, if this thing runs, this is going to like, you know, nine or 10 or whatever. But the reality is, is that maybe only 20% or 10% of those types of trades are really going to work well for you, you know? And that's why in longing, you need to be just so, so, so kind of disciplined. And so my, my advice to you would really be, you know, if you see something pop up on your screen, 
and you know you already feel that FOMO and you already are like man I gotta get in this I gotta trade this you know take as much as an hour you know set a timer on your phone for an hour and say I'm not gonna long this for like an hour and that can be difficult because you can see stocks that get overextended and that just keep going and going and going and so after they top out I usually wait you know like an hour I think another thing is that you know, as far as the revenge trading goes, and especially with PDT, it's difficult when you kind of get in too early, you make a mistake, and then you're like, I only have so many trades for the week, but you know, I want to get this back. If some, if you find yourself in that type of situation, it's best to just really wait another hour. You know, it takes sometimes 30 minutes to an hour for these emotions to kind of cool down and drain out of our system and allow us to take another, you know, type of trade again. And especially, you know, it's like almost like, you see something like that, it, it literally like terrorizes your emotions, right? Especially as a long trader, when you miss something and you see it just go up, up, up and up, you know, it, it sucks and, you know, you've missed it, but you need to just say to yourself, okay, like, you know, I, I obviously have missed this one. You know, I haven't got it. Now I'm going to wait like an hour or 30 minutes. I'm going to take some yeah. time and really kind of collect myself. And just one more thing is that I think stock selection is really key. And, you know, especially with the hot chicks, you never want two competing you know, against each other head to head. And also another thing you never want is that you never want to be longing things that really are not doing that much volume and really don't really have that much attention, you know? And, you know, there are times where, you know, like we talk sometimes and you're like, oh, well, that stock's only up 20% or, oh, that stock's only up this much or it's that much. I, I never set hard and fast rules. I'm only paying attention to the volume, you know, how much attention I think this thing has, uh, what's kind of going on because by the time something is up, you know, a hundred percent, sometimes it can't really go up any higher. And we hit this kind of like price ceiling and you, we saw it on SNOA today where the stock just kind of tanked out of the open. Right. Uh -huh. so, you know, I, I'm not really someone who puts hard and fast rules on, you know, the percentage or anything like that. I'm paying attention to, is it the hot chick? Does it have an attention? Are people looking to kind of get involved? And then like, when we get that kind of dip, okay, are we back up again? You know, do I think we have some short sellers who were kind of had that FOMO that you kind of talked about on the long side, on the short side, right? And that's how we kind of play against those types of people and get that move higher. So I think really setting rules for your FOMO, if you just take a look at your trades and find out what mistakes you're making and you set rules to, like my rules are designed so I'm not trading. Like I want to have so many rules that I only can make, you know, maybe less than five trades a day, right? Because if you're making too many trades a day or you're not making the right trades a day, then that's something that can kind of hurt you on that road to consistency. But that's just kind of my thoughts on that. Right, I, right. I think I think uh, for longs too, this isn't even like part of my point, but like I think for longs too, like rules are so almost much harder and like much more important because I think as a long, it's like you're, you, you, it's a hard because obviously a stock can technically run from like a dollar to a hundred dollars, right? But so every time you get in, you have to fight that emotion of like, this thing's going to go to fucking the moon. Whereas a short, it's like, you kind of know, like there's only a certain level of how far this thing's going to go down today, you know? So as a long, it's definitely got to be really fucking hard. And you, I think you guys fight much more emotions, but, but on your, on your three topics so you have, there's um, discipline, uh, like ch uh, chasing, like kind of FOMOing trading. Discipline, discipline patience, yep. and FOMO. Yeah. So yeah. So I guess on the first, the first part of discipline is, and this is my favorite point to bring up to people, is the thing with discipline is, one, we've talked about it before in the past, where if you're not disciplined outside of trading, it's almost impossible to be disciplined inside of trading. I fully believe that. So if you're struggling with discipline, I challenge you outside of trading to put in things in place, whether it's going to the gym daily, diet. Uh, not drinking during the weekdays, put something in place that you have to test your discipline outside of the market because you have to work on it outside of this as well. And that will translate and correlate kind of into your, your market behavior. And I think the key thing with discipline is through discipline, you will find consistency, right? And what makes the best traders and people like Alex in, or Bao or Tosh or any of these guys great is that they're just consistent with their discipline. And if you notice, the more disciplined they are, I mean, I, how often do you see these guys really lose, right? Not very often, like once, yeah. I, once every few months, like, you know, they'll have a red day or something like that. And through teaching yourself discipline outside of the market, bringing it in, you're just going to notice slowly over time, like 
wait a second, I'm following these rules that I have in place and I'm not losing. And then the more you do that, in my opinion, the easier it gets to stay disciplined, if that makes sense. Because you just like, it's the same thing in life in general. Like I work out, I try to work out every weekday, right? And the more I stick with that, the easier it is for me to do that. And then also do my diet and then also maybe not drink on certain days or whatever, because it's all around a focus in my life. Um, and discipline yeah, stuff, like it, it's not easy, man. Discipline stuff because it's, that's why trading is hard because I think 90% of it is discipline and like patience and all that. Now, as far as patience, I remember Harry said something a long time ago and it was a really good kind of quote. And he was just saying that the more patient you are with your entry, the more patient you can be with your exit. Yeah. And I find that really true for both longing and shorting because it's the same thing. Like if I get in at that first, especially shorting, because I scale into my shorts sometimes like one to two bullets longing. Sometimes I don't really, I'm not my thing. So I can't speak on that. But for me, it's like half the time, if I just wait for my initial line and my initial entry, not only would I have a better average, I can size in easier with less stress. So like what I do a lot of times is the very, it's a, a point from Bao as well, is the first line that I want to get in at. I just skip or I use like tiny, tiny size. Like if I want to start my position with like a thousand shares, let's say I might use a hundred shares at that first kind of line, because I know that if I'm more patient for the best entry, then it's going to be, make me more patient for my exit and also give me more confidence as far as adding size and staying calm, like in my, my position. Cause if you just size into the first line and you can't stay patient for that setup, then you're, you're just going to end up either getting shaken out or it's not going to be the trade you want. You won't even feel great about it. And honestly, if the more patient you stay for your setups, it kind of correlates back to your discipline. The more patient you are, your discipline's going to kick in. You're saying, all right, I'm waiting for my spot and this trade's going to work. Most of the time, if you trade outside of your discipline and your patience, the trade's going to fucking suck anyways, and you're going to lose money. That's just, that's just regardless. Now, as far as PDT, I guess on this last piece too, and like kind of like PDT, revenge trading, all that stuff. PDT is hard. And I'm not going to say I agree with that rule. I think it's kind of BS and I can give you a billion reasons why, but it's stupid to complain about because we all have to deal with it. Right. Unless you're from yeah. Canada, like Harriet. So <laughs> I think that messes way, me up the most. <laughs> it's, it's a pain in the ass. And I, again, I think it's a dumb fucking rule, but at the end of the day, right. We have to deal with it. So the way I approach it is and the way I approached it when I was under PDT is I thought of it like I was like a blackjack player but I only really had one hand to play. So I had to avoid any setup that I thought was subpar. And at this point in your career, you need to identify which setups are subpar, which setups are just like you're trading to trade. Cause when you're over PDT, you can kind of take those subpar setups with smaller size and, and try it out and feel it out and see how it works. But when you're under PDT, you're at the table, you have one bet. So your one bet better be a, a you have two face cards or something like that. Like you better have all the right cards and be the most confident you are in that setup, which is your A plus setup, your A plus hand for you to place that bet. And I know it's hard and I know it's tough, but you have to wire yourself to kind of understand that like you're, this is the position you're in right now and you will get out of it by staying patient, right? Your whole issues are these, not even issues, these three concern are just related to discipline with everything, right? Like if, if you stay more patient and more disciplined while you're under PDT, you're going to get faster over PDT because when you kind of break that and you revenge trade and you do something like that, you're pushing the, you're just pushing the goal line faster, farther, right? You just, you, there's more money now you have to make to get over PDT and it's a huge bitch. But if you can just kind of stay patient for those 20 blackjack hands and be okay with it. And you know, when you're about to make a FOMO trade or you're about to revenge trade, everybody knows the feeling, everybody feels it in their stomach. They feel it in their brain. They're about to do something stupid. And you need to recognize that. Like I do it to this day. I get the feeling like, Oh, I'm going to get in right now and just see how it goes. When I feel that I feel it in my, my stomach and like my hand, I'm just like, I know I'm about to click a button and look like an idiot and do something stupid. So I literally have to pull myself out of the computer. I just take a, I take a step, drink some water, spin around my room for a second go pee and then come back. And you'll find that if you can avoid those little moments, the, the better setups will show up. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. I would say sometimes it's easy to get tricked into uh, uh, thinking, you know, there's a, like a confirmation of entry. Um, you know, I, I just feel like you, you know, when, when, when is the right entry? When is the right confirmation signal? And um, yeah. sometimes you phone in a little too early. And what gets me is under PDT, you know, like 
you know, say I have a, a few trades on the day, you know, that that's one trade wasted. If I got, if I got into really, even though I do have that gut feeling, like you said, I, I don't know, you know, how you get that gut feeling, but it's kind of like an experience uh, telling you like, Hey, like this doesn't feel right. Um, and, yeah. and sometimes like you, you see it all on, on the Aloha charts, you know, like he gets in and then gets out real quick, just yeah. knowing like, Hey, like, you know, I'm in too early or just, it doesn't feel right. Uh, I can't do that yet since I'm under PDT. Um, I, I know I should, you know, cut like for like break even, um, but sometimes I get emotional and like, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll just see where this goes. And that kind of fucks me up, but. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's not easy to, that's not easy. Go, yeah, there. I, uh, I think that like one thing that can help you is that, you know, let's say you come in tomorrow and, and, or maybe, or maybe you even take a day off or something and, you know, you, you kind of go over like your, your past trades and you kind of start to try and like develop a really, really hard and fast set of rules, you know, developing rules are the easy part. Following them is hard, but once you kind of follow them and like, you can even maybe even go over some rules that I talked about, because those are rules that I use in my trading every single day. And with longing, it's so important that you're not chasing these massive pump candles or that you're not buying at the top way over VWAP or you're not buying into a whole number. You're not, you know, so all the, all those things are, are very important. And so what you can do is that, you know, you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to sit there and, and say to myself, uh, and I, I, you know, I'm go you're going to have to kind of make it a habit. And that's what Alex, Bao, Tosh, they've all developed, you know, their, their rules, their entry signals or whatever, and just made it habits every single day. And, you know, you start on Monday and you're like, oh, this is tough, man. This is tough. You get to Tuesday. This is tough, man. This is tough. You get to Wednesday. You're still following the same set of rules. You're still doing the same execution. You're still doing what you need to do. By the time you get to Wednesday, I guarantee you, you're going to have a better trading day and say, wow. It's not as tough anymore to follow these rules because I've started to make it a habit. By the time you're there in two weeks and you have got, you know, these habits built, you know, it's so easy. You know, it really takes 30 days, you know, to build a habit or, or 90 days or whatever. And it might take like, you know, a bunch of running around and FOMO and revenge trading after you've broken that rules to kind of start to break it. And then you fall into a new kind of set of bad habits. So I think just maintaining good habits is something that is definitely key and just actively being aware of like, okay, you know, these are, are, are what I've, what I've, you know, these are the goals that I'm striving to achieve. This is what I want to become. This is what is going to kind of get me there. I'm going to develop this into a habit and that can help you a lot. I think also another one is just trading that like you don't need the money. You know, I see so many longs yeah. trying to buy the top of the range. I see so many shorts trying to short the bottom of the range chasing, you know, if you're chasing anything and like, I don't care what it is in life, you know, you're not going to get it right. But if you're patient, you know, you're sitting there, you're waiting for it. That's something that is going to help you a lot. I had a conversation with two other long guys today and they were like, man, we sold too early. And then, you know, the next day they're stopped out because they didn't sell at the right time. I'm always selling the same areas of the chart every single fucking day. I'm always longing the same areas. And where am I selling every single day? I'm selling always at the high of day. Every single day. People yeah. are like, range, hey, range bound, right? <clears throat> I'm just drawing the bottom. I'm drawing the top. I'm saying, okay. Like I find in this market, inner lines have been working very, very well for longing. I also find that selling at the top of the range has been working very well. We get the occasional one that goes to the fucking moon. I don't give a shit. Um, and, <laughs> you know, so everyone is like, man, but, but yesterday I sold too early. It's like, you just are at a point where you just need to just keep building singles and just, yeah, just one, one, bill, right? one yep. signal snowballs into another, snowballs into another, snowballs into another. And it really gets you to becoming profitable. And the last thing that I just wanted to talk about was just, Take a little bit of time and wait for the sell, uh, wait for the setup to kind of develop, right? If it's a VWAP reclaim you're looking for, there's no need to buy that first VWAP test. Yeah. You can wait. Kind of, kind of like on um, DBGI today. Sorry yeah. to cut you off, yeah. but I don't know if you, if you kind of saw it hovering around 450 and it, it looked like, like, you know, it was going to have like a little VWAP reclaim, you know, uh, and I, I actually got in too early and, right when i got in i i knew i was in too early but you know it, it just goes back to like the limited trades and like okay i'm just gonna set a stop yeah. a little below and it's just an unnecessary paper cut um uh but yeah i, I recognized i was too early and um uh 
uh, yeah, so yeah. I just wanted to the thing give is, that with, example. And, and we can kind of talk about like that kind of scenario because that might be a good scenario to kind of end on. Um, but DBGI, you have to be saying to yourself, okay, in this chart, how am I going to be able to get excess demand? Because if you want to become a long trader and you want to grow your account, that's the only thing that matters is excess demand. So when I look at DBGI, and I don't have the chart in front of me, but I believe we had 450, we had VWAP, and the top was maybe like 5, 550, right? Yeah. The top was already set on DBGI. The odds of that climbing all the way back and pulling like an EDSA from two weeks ago or something like that, very, very, very slim. If I have to say something from two weeks ago or from last month, it's a setup that does not happen often. So on that, I simply left that alone because I knew every single long trader did not what get did not get what they wanted today. ALF, yeah, we got you know eight bucks to eight forty. You know, I didn't feel that trade in my bones when I got it. I wasn't like this is a great trade. I was like this is a good scalp. You know, and I think yeah. for long traders, they're always looking for home runs because, you know, you're longing and you have the home run potential. Right. And that's what James kind of talked about. Like James knows like, OK, this stock can only really go down so far in this particular situation. But with longing, it can go higher and it can go to 10 and the moon and whatever. Right. Longing is very kind of optimist uh, biased. Right. And so I think that um, in, in that kind of situation of DBGI, right? Yeah, we got over VWAP, but you have to remember VWAP is a resistance level of supply. What was right after VWAP 450? So not only do we have VWAP as that kind of supply area that makes every single long trader hesitant, we have 450 right after it. And 450 is a difficult, difficult level to break. And especially coming from that, you know, kind of 430, 420 area, you know, from that's a long way for that stock to go. So in that type of situation, I'd rather see it kind of get to 450, take a break, wait an hour, wait at 30 minutes, wait a while, and then see if we can come back, right? right. Because- I need more time, basically, yeah. 100%. So where are shorts going to stop out on that chart? Where do you think shorts are going to stop out on that chart? High day, I would say, or pre-market highs. Yeah, yeah, right? So- you know, why do you want to be in a situation where you're longing, you know, before no shorts in trouble, right? And there's some times where we get to pre-market high a day too quick and we stuff and we go lower. That's the type of situation where the chart wasn't meant for that type of play, right? But there are situations where the range is tiny and we can get that short stop out and we can keep moving higher. But these are things that you need to really take note of, of, okay, shorts may be stopping out, but this chart has gone up a little bit too much for me and it's a little too overextended for me to want to get long on. You really have to be very, very, very selective in what you're longing and, and the way things go up and the way things move. And, and how you figure that out is, number one, it's screen time. And I think you've got enough screen time by now. It's really just saying to yourself, yeah. I am not going to be longing these overextended charts or these broken charts. And if you say that to yourself, that'll help you a lot, right? DBGI, like you can admit that was a broken chart, right? And you probably longed it and felt stupid afterward after a tank. But you need to be saying- I, okay. I, feel, like, I feel like it wasn't really broken, but I mean, the, uh, I mean, I feel like the chart was still in, still intact, but um, I, I don't really feel like it was broken. broken but... You know, when we're 50 cents away from high a day, uh, you know, 60 cents away from high a day, that's, what do you say, Harry? If the homies are shorting it at the top, it's broken. <laughs> yeah. It's not something you want to be the top, I don't want to get caught in the drop. And <laughs> I, we also had ALF competing, right? So we had yeah. ALF competing in that type of situation as well. So not only Ooh. do we have ALF, we have a heavy float. We have a ton of supply ahead of us, right? Just yeah. yeah. Would you say that pre-market was um, <clears throat> kind of active, this, this pre-market, this morning? Uh, I mean, we had SNOA. It wasn't a great one. wasn't some wasn't a stock that I loved. We had uh, ALF that was kind of moving around, got broken, got reclaimed. I don't know if it was. I, I and yeah, we also had DBGI. I mean, I guess it was active. For me, it was active, but it didn't give a lot of great long opportunity. You know, we had a lot of overextended things move higher. You know, whatever. And I'm okay. The thing is with me is that like I've made enough money now. So if I miss something, I'm like, fuck. I, like, I mean, I, obviously I'm going to be like, shit, that sucks. But I'm not going to feel it in my bones, right? But when I was new and I was first starting, 
every single time I missed something or felt like I missed something, I felt it. And it really, really, really sucks. And you got to be oh, able man. to let things <laughs> like that go in order to yeah. really move on as a trader and really kind of evolve. That's one thing that you really need to let go. As a long, it's tough because we don't get pre-market runners every single day, right? As a short, we get a ton of aids pre-market, right? I mean, half the MIC shorts I know are just fucking bullshitting, shorting pre-market, right? You know, right? Everyone is fucking shorting pre-market, even though Alex says not to. Everyone <laughs> fucking is. And because really, like, as much, I mean, again, I, I don't think it's easier to do either thing. I just think there are a lot of kind of easier kind of layup, short setup, setups kind of in the pre-market and stuff like that. It really depends on the market cycle, right? But I mean, I don't know. I just think that yeah. when you're a long trader and you miss a long, you know, I've been a short and a bet a long. When I see something dump as a short, it sucks. But when I see something go high from seven to $12 as a long, you know, that is something as a new trader that I felt a lot. And, you yeah. know, it, it's hard. hard, man. One thing I've actually been doing is um, <clears throat> I've been waking up. I mean, for a while, I usually wake up over here. I'm, I'm in California, so. Uh, I wake up at like three, around three o'clock in the morning. And, um, you know, I, I would get to the screens pretty early. And I just, uh, I feel like I, I did that because I didn't want to miss anything. And um, lately, I've been starting a little, a little over an Smart. hour after that. So Smart. I, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, yeah Harry yeah, does it too. So it's awesome. And I feel, like, I feel like it does help because sometimes, you know, if you, if you're, if you start with the loss in pre-market or something yeah. like that, you know, it kind of starts to go bad. Yeah, yeah so I've been waking up later, you know, to help with that. Um, but That's today, fine. I guess, you know, I saw SNOA, you know, uh, I, I missed DVGI pre-market. Maybe that gave me a little, that gave me a little, you know, FOMO uh, at yeah. the open. Yeah, that's why I jumped into that. But yeah, it, it happens, man. But it, yeah. it, it, you can do something. I just want, I don't mean to cut James off. You can, what you okay. can do is keep a little journal and what you can do is keep your emotional temperature in the morning and ask yourself questions. Did I miss something? Did I see something? Did I sell too early? Anything that could trigger you in the least to revenge trade. You really need to seep into your emotions and get to know yourself so well. Take your emotional temperature before that. I like that a lot. Right? Take your emotional temperature and gauge where you're at. Yeah. You can do that before you start trading too. hundred percent. Like, how, right. how do you feel in the morning? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel fucking like nervous and all that? And, and yeah. I think that's, that's a really, I like that a lot actually, Harry. That was really, that was smooth. That's cool. And I think, I think we're coming up like on our time where we do have to wrap up, but the last little piece of advice I want to give you before we do is I really recommend for long bias guys too, and shorts, anyone new, you know, all of trading in the beginning is just lack of, a lot of it for people is lack of confidence in your setup. And something I did early on that was like a really key piece was I really did print out and screenshot all of my charts and Alex's charts and even Bao's charts and stuff. And I actually would put confirmed moves uh, like next to my screen. So like if I'm in a setup, cause I'd rather in the beginning, especially under PDT, I waited for a move to confirm before getting in. So I just had that reference right next to me. So as a long, like you can like, print a VWAP reclaim picture, put it right next to you. And you know what it's going to look, what you want it to look like for it to be a confirmed move. Yeah. And, and that helped me out a ton. That helped me out a ton. Just having that reference point, like right next to me. Yeah. That's I a good yeah, like that. yeah. But yeah, I know we are coming up on our time. We let it go a little bit, but it was well, actually really nice. You got thing. To... Uh, just oh, out of curiosity. Yep. Uh, yep. What are you doing right now? Like for a living, like for a job? Oh, uh, right now I'm actually, um, I'm working part-time with my dad. He, he owns a business yeah, yeah. Uh, and kind of just like side jobs with him. And then uh, I'm actually door dashing uh, throughout the day here and there at night. Hustle bro. And <laughs> just so I could really, you know, have, um, be able to trade in the morning, you know, and get that screen time. And uh, I've been doing it, you know, for about a year now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a weird schedule, but uh, I think it's definitely worth it, you know, and um yeah, but, uh, you, dude. I, I, I definitely thank you guys, you know, for, uh, and then all of them I see, you know, for teaching me and, uh, you know, being where I am today. So, uh, it's, it's, hell yeah, it's, bro. 
<laughs> Hell yeah, man. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you for talking with us. And I, I'd love for you to update us further on in your, uh, with your progress. Yeah, for sure, man. Cool, man. Thank you so much, George. And, and thank you again. See ya. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys.